what we can learn and what we should know is that we should never ask if we can assert our jurisdiction. We should never ask to be granted the right to assert our jurisdiction. It's like asking if you're down on your knees, if it's okay to get back on your feet. If you're asking for the right to be who you are. So I think that more than anything is what we can learn. That as nations, as first peoples, we have inherent uh, powers of jurisdiction. We have the authority and we have the power to preside over our traditional territories. And that's our jurisdiction. Well, a large part of it is attitude. As you know, uh, the colonial approach to the Americas was blessed by uh, Pope Alexander VI, I think, in 1493, who said we were not human. We were subhuman heathens to be subjugated and subdued by good Christian countries and good Christians from Europe. And we have been treated like less than human beings by, by Canada. And the legislation is still there. So we, we need to remove the legislation. We need to re remove the attitude. And as indigenous people, we have to get back on our feet, be strong enough to assert ourselves. And we are getting there, but it, it needs to be done sooner. Well, there's generations of us that have suffered from uh, residential school and the oppression of, of governments. People in our communities, some of our people have become subdued become colonized to the point where they need to ask, ask the priests, ask the government if it's okay to do certain things, to be granted certain things. And I think one of the most important things to do is, is to, to stand up, speak, act together, and recognize that this is your country, this is your territory. This is your nation, and you don't need to ask Canada, you don't need to ask anyone to preside over those territories that were given to you by the Creator. I think that that is the fundamental change that needs to happen is the foundation. You talked about, like, you know, what are the foundational changes? And it is the fact that the foundation that we have created this assertion of jurisdiction has been based on a fallacy. And it's that, um, you know, we're, we're a country, we're a 150-year-old confederation that was created by two founding nations. And we also continue to have um, the expression of jurisdiction that is based on um, a, um, a premise that the people for whom the jurisdiction has been exercised over were not really a people. They were not a people that had their own governments and, you know, in fact, um, continue to have the right to have their own governments. So it's that fundamental change that that's the foundational change that needs to happen. Well, I think it's all around the recognition, the recognition of our rights. You know, so that's, I mean, within ourselves, there's recognition. And that's what I mean about, you know, what we're doing right now is our own people have to recognize what we have and, and where we should go with it. But I think, you know, our coexistence piece of, you know, working with the Crown, there's got to be a recognition of rights from the federal government, you know, in order for us to really take, a, you know, a collective next step. You know, under a Harper government, there was not even a notion that recognition of rights would ever come to fruition. By the government so what that leaves us with is really only one recourse which is court so if we if the government's not going to recognize our rights then we go to court you know and then the court you know we, we believe that we'll win they'll recognize our rights and then you'll force that hand but it shouldn't have to come to that 
You know, litigious world is very difficult, it's challenging, it's expensive, and it never provides the solution that you're really looking for. So part of us, uh, you know, is saying, well, why do we, why do we need to go and do those things if, you know, the powers that be can recognize your rights and, and then we can move forward together.